to build your NVMe SSD, an external portable NVMe SSD, you just need two things. One is your NVMe SSD. In this case, I'm using Samsung's 990 Pro 4TB variant. And you need a Thunderbolt enclosure. This is very important. Uh, you need to use a Thunderbolt 4 or a Thunderbolt 3 enclosure in order to get the maximum speed out of your uh, NVMe SSD. In this case, I'm using Acasis 40 Gbps NVMe M.2 SSD enclosure. You get a good aluminum Thunderbolt 4 enclosure. And uh, this is very important. This is the Thunderbolt 4 cable. If you use USB 3.2 or USB 3 cable, it will not give you the desired speed. You should use a Thunderbolt 4 cable, which is provided by them. They have included a small screwdriver, few screws, and um, there's a thermal pad. So you get the thermal pad as well. They have included two thermal pads. And of course, the user manual. So let me quickly open up uh, the enclosure and install this um, Samsung 990 Pro SSD. Uh, look at this tiny beast. This is 990 Pro 4TB variant. The best part is, it is indeed surprising, they are packed two NAND cells each 2TB on the same side. So you don't need to apply the heat or thermal pad on the other side. So there is nothing over here. Everything is packed here. It's a single sided drive, which is very good. I didn't expect this. As of now, none of the 4TB NVMe SSD is single sided. Only Samsung is able to achieve this. As you can see, there are two NAND cells, each, each is 2TB, 2TB each. And here there is a thermal regulator, which is packed here. So all good. I'm going to apply the thermal pad. and I'm going to install this on my uh, Thunderbolt enclosure. it's very simple but it is worth it because in order to get a 4tb internal storage on a macbook pro you'll be paying 1 lakh 20 thousand on top of that it is not flexible so the best part the best thing about building your own nvme ssd is you can use it anywhere in the future well if you're building a pc you can just Take this NVMe SSD out from this enclosure and pop it in your PC or even your PS5 gaming console. These are the components inside the um, Thunderbolt enclosure. It is basic, but it does the job. Installing this is very simple. Just pop it in and uh, screw it. As I mentioned, installing this is very simple. You just need to pop it in. Make sure it is secured properly. Now, installing the thermal pad is very important. I have seen many uh, people, what they do is, they just apply the thermal pad in one shot. Th that's not the right way. What you need to do is, you need to separate the heat pads for this part, this component, this is the thermal regulator, and uh, these are the NAND cells. So you need to separate this so the heat dissipation is more efficient. So Acasis have sent uh, two uh, thermal pad. One is 1 mm and another one is uh, 0.5 mm. I'm going to use the 1 mm thermal pad. I've cut this thermal pad into two. One, uh, this one for the NAND cells and another one for the thermal regulator. So as I mentioned, I have cut, I have cut the thermal pad into two. One for the NAND cells and another part is for the thermal regulator so that the heat dissipation is more efficient. One more thing that you need to check before peeling off these from the heat pad is to check whether these heat pads actually touches 
the chassis of this enclosure which is very important these eat pads should touch the chassis for the e-dissipation or else there won't be a proper e-dissipation and uh, the components will eat up and it may destroy the components i think it should touch but however before peeling these stickers i just want to check whether this actually touches the chassis yes so it is touching so let me peel off this and uh, let me secure the chassis on top of this that is it uh, you just need to secure this with the screws and you are good to go there we go the last part of this uh, installation is to secure this with the screws make sure the screws are secured properly and the good thing is thermal pad is touching the chassis that is very important this is good for a very long time and uh, the speeds that you get from this nvm ssd is really good and you won't get this from any uh, portable ssd on top of that you can use this NVMe SSD again if you're planning to build a PC or buying a PS5 gaming console. I needed this NVMe SSD to store all my rendered video files, storing cache files and rendering files because that takes up a huge amount of storage when I'm using with uh, video editing programs like Final Cut or DaVinci. There we go. That is it. You would get this error because this NVMe drive is not formatted to work on this uh, Apple products. Just go to initialize. So this is what our drive is. All you need to do is you just need to click on erase. So I'm going with APFS. You have a few more options like uh, Mac OS extended, Mac OS extended case sensitive, XFAT. So you use XFAT only when you're using it with both your Windows PC and your Mac. In this case, I'm going to use this drive only with my MacBook Pro. So I'm going to format this as APFS for maximum efficiency. Again, you have GUID partition map, master boot record, Apple partition map. So you go with the GUID and erase. there we go so this is done now you will be able to see the storage information 